Okay, in this video, we're going to take a look at the AP Calculus Review Plan and assignments that I give to my students. If you find this helpful, I'd love to hear about it in the comments or giving a thumbs up to the video is also great. Um, I think this might be useful to students not in my class, which is basically all of you, uh, to students who are self-studying or maybe even to other teachers, uh, whether they're new or old or just looking for how to use their review time. Uh, my goal for all of my students, and really anyone using my notes or my videos, uh, is for them to get a 5 on the AP exam. So try to keep that in mind as you're looking things over because it's pretty aggressive, it involves a lot of work, but it's nice and organized and I think that can be helpful to people. Uh, so the first thing you want to do is go to uh, the website, which is at turksmathstuff.com slash APCalcReview. So I put it up here. I don't know if I can figure out how to edit it in. I'll put it uh, on the screen here, I guess. Um, so uh, let's get started. So the best advice I can give anyone preparing for this exam is to learn the math. If you can take the class at your school, you should do it. If you find yourself having to self-study or you just want more resources, I kind of think you can't go wrong by looking at my notes and videos. Um, so there's this and then there's this um, so if you're in a B uh, you have to know everything that's in these notes up to notes 24 so uh, it's a lot of notes and if you scroll way down we get here all right so you're gonna stop at notes 24 if you're in calc a B if you're in calc BC you have to keep going on this page so all through here and then when you get there you got to go over to this one and then go through notes one through 17 here. And if you wanna keep learning after that, that's where my multivariable notes start, but for AP calculus, you would be done. So that's, that's my first advice, learn the math. All right, let's assume that you have done that and you are here to review. So what's our study plan? Um, I'm gonna click on this table here to uh, expand the assignments and you'll see there's a lot of them. There are 24 assignments, there we go. Uh, in this, we have some DMIST MC, uh, we have AP MC, and then we have preparing tests. So these are various things. I will go through them in a minute. So you might notice that there's an approximate date. That would be a due date uh, for my students. And I mean, I'm doing this uh, for posterity, right? So like, I don't know if these are exact, but this is around when I would make things due. If you look at the column with the due dates, they start in mid-February, even though I usually finish teaching in mid-March. Uh, you don't have to be done with all the material for students to start reviewing. And anything that you review while you're still learning, I think only really makes learning easier. So I don't think that's a problem. Uh, the assignments are kind of stretched out so that they end the Friday before AP exams start. I think that's a good idea because uh, once exams start, there's kind of no telling how many times I'll see my students. Uh, they take a lot of courses and they take a lot of exams. If you follow approximately these dates, it's a lot of work, but things are pretty well spaced out. Now, if you're in BC, you've got to expand the next table too. So here goes. We scroll here, we click, uh, and you can see that there are more assignments. Uh, I do think that if you're uh, quote unquote, just in BC, this is probably too much work. Uh, my students have already taken AB, so they're focused on studying just for the BC stuff, um, not the overlapping material. So really just, I guess, the C stuff. Uh, it's not as much work for them to do these assignments. If it's too much, what I would recommend you do is skip the things that aren't multiple choice. So in this table, there's uh, DMIST MC, you can see, uh, and then there's also DMIST with no MC. So if you are in BC and you're studying, I would probably skip the stuff that doesn't say MC. Uh, you'll get plenty of that when you do the free response questions. I don't have any dates listed uh, for these BC assignments because I'm not really sure what someone just in BC would do. Uh, my advice would be obviously to make sure that you finish this before the exam. Uh, you know, you have to do that. I think what I'd probably actually do if, if I were the person studying is I would just shift all of the AB assignments up here. I think I would shift them back maybe a month or a month and a half, like to the end of December or the beginning of January, uh, and start there. If you're in BC, that, that would be fine. Like there, you would not have a problem. Um, and then just tack on the BC 
review problems at the end. I think that that would definitely work. Uh, so let's talk about, in the table, there's a couple designations. So you'll see DMIST, MC. You'll also see in the BC part, DMIST with no MC after. Uh, there's APMC, and then there's preparing tests. Let's explain what each of those is. So if we go down here, what are the assignments? All right, uh, DMIST things are gonna come from mastermathmentor.com. That site's fantastic. Uh, it has a ton of really great resources. It's basically the only site I'm comfortable sending my students to for additional problems. Uh, I've got direct links to the pages that hold what you need. Um, so you can click through and take a look. I'll click on here. You can see here, here, and here. So you'll click this, uh, you scroll down here, and what you wanna do is you wanna download these. Uh, and this is where the assignments are. So DMIST, uh, MC, uh, the problems in these have numbers and you just do the one. You'll work it out, obviously. Um, so that's, that's the demystifying stuff. Okay, so the preparing tests are a little bit different uh, and maybe the trickiest part, depending on uh, where you're coming from. These uh, all come from a book of practice tests. Uh, I explained in the, in, on the webpage uh, the two companies that I buy them from. I've also linked to them. So there's Venture Publishing and there's uh, DNS Marketing. And so if you click, you'll see, uh, this is the AB book. If you're in BC, obviously you'd buy the BC one. Uh, and then uh, this is DNS Marketing. They ship very fast in my experience, although I think I'm close to where they ship from. Uh, I do have to collect money from my students uh, and they will end up writing in these books. So, you know, it's a consumable, I guess. I do know of schools, however, that just buy classroom sets and then issue them to students like they would a normal textbook. I think that's a great option if that's something that you need to look into. Uh, both of the companies make books that are great. Uh, I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. For whatever reason, I've always just ordered uh, the AB book from Venture Publishing and then the BC book from DNS because I do teach students in consecutive years and the AB and BC books from both publishers, if you buy both from the same publisher, they will reuse problems. So I have to use a book from a different publisher. Um, if I were only buying one, I don't think it would matter which one I choose. Uh, I, I genuinely think you cannot go wrong. Uh, I do think that the, um, the DNS book is a little bit harder, which I think is good, uh, but I don't like the physical book as much, uh, though it looks very slick, uh, it's well produced. The Venture Publishing book is a spiral bound book that lays flat when it's open. And I think that when you're writing in a book, that's like fantastic, that's kind of the ideal thing. Um, so those are the preparing tests. Uh, next up is the APMC assignments. Uh, those are just uh, old AP exams. Like they're the actual different exams that have been made available. Uh, and they're available in a bunch of different ways. So I've linked to the ones that are available on the College Board website. So that's 98, uh, 88, 98 and 2012. These link directly to the College Board website. It's a little scary though, because uh, when you go to it, it says something, I guess this one doesn't say it. Let me close that. Uh, one of them is like, don't, don't post this on a website, but I got it from their website. So I don't think I'm posting it on my website. I think I'm just linking to theirs. So I think I'm in the clear here. Um, so those are the ones that you can get directly from them. There's a PDF somewhere on the internet that contains uh, 1969, 73, 85, uh, 88, 93, 97, and 98. Uh, 98 and 88 I've linked here already. Uh, at some point you could buy those and now, uh, I don't know if you can still buy them, but you can definitely find them uh, by Googling. So uh, 2013 through 2016, I'm giving you a history now of <laughs> all these exams. 2013 through 16 are kind of in limbo. They're, uh, they don't exist in, in, in any way that you can like clearly get. Uh, I think maybe they're somewhere in the AP Classroom Problem Database, but they're not labeled that way. Um, at some point you could just get them in PDF form from the AP Audit site if you were an audit approved teacher. And honestly, if you try hard enough, you can still definitely find them. So, you know, look around. Uh, 2017 through 19, those are loaded into AP Classroom. So if you're a teacher, you can assign them. Uh, they require the lockdown browser. Uh, and I think you're supposed to do them in class also. I have to review that before I do anything with it. Uh, if you're a student, you can ask your teacher to assign them for you because they really control that for you. 
I do need to say that with the real AP multiple choice tests, other than 1988, 98, and 2012, technically you cannot give them to your students to do outside of uh, your proctoring uh, environment. And so uh, for that reason, I actually think it's better probably to just use uh, unofficial tests and things like that. Uh, but if you do find yourself in an environment where you can manage that, maybe give them uh, time at lunch, time in class, maybe some time after school. I know there are people who do like a Saturday session, which unless you're getting paid, I wouldn't really endorse. Uh, unless you can manage that, uh, going with unofficial things is probably the better way to go. But that said, um, I do think they're like the absolute gold standard. And so I do include them and I do make the time for it. Uh, I know it might be hard to find the real tests, but there are tons of alternatives, which if you're in an AP class, you're probably well aware of this, right? So I would say just substitute any practice test from anywhere uh, for the ones that I've listed. I think practicing these, like AP multiple choice, is really a question of quantity over quality. Like if you have to choose, just like do more problems. Obviously high quality is better. So like the real deal test is better, but like if you can't get them, uh, there, are all, there are a lot of alternatives, right? So, uh, Barron's and Princeton Review, I think, are both great options. They're not as good as the real thing, uh, and they're not as good, I think, as the uh, Venture Publishing and DNS books, but they're still totally fine. So I've linked to uh, the Amazon search results just in case you want to, you know, click that and, and go directly there, right? You can get a lot of practice tests by spending not too much money on a couple of books, or you can look in your library, um, or you can look for used copies, or you know, you could potentially find a PDF somewhere on the internet. Uh, that's up to you. So I do also recommend uh, if you're if you're in the market for it, uh, UWorld. So I'll click that. UWorld is a company that I think mostly started out with like uh, like MCAT prep or something, and they've just kind of like moved down. Uh, but they have stuff for AP exams. Uh, they had a, a free offer at some point, uh, and I went in, I took a look. Uh, I was really impressed. Uh, the questions in their materials are super close to the real thing. Uh, and uh, I'm not honestly sure how they're getting away with that because uh, I am a person who has gotten a copyright strike from College Board before. Uh, but whatever, if you're the one studying, it's, it's just fantastic that they uh, have stuff that looks exactly like the real thing. So I do kind of recommend that. It is expensive, I think, though, or it's on the expensive side. So, and at, as a teacher, I wouldn't like get a get it for my whole class, but I would recommend my students look at it if they're looking for more uh, to do, but maybe wait until like the month right before the exam, pay for one month and just like go at it. Um, all right, so that's what I would do for the multiple choice questions on the exam. Multiple choice is half of the points on the exam. If you can get all of those right, you're probably already gonna get a four, probably a high four to be honest. So now it comes down to free response stuff that you have to get ready for. So uh, I would say that uh, prepping for free response is super important and it is by far my favorite part of the AP exam. So if you're a teacher wondering how to use your review time in class, in my opinion, working through FRQs during class time is the absolute best use of class time. Um, the different parts are pretty much similar from year to year. I mean, they might be within a different question, um, but if you get through enough of these, you'll feel like super comfortable while you're taking the exam. I can't think of a time there was a question on the exam uh, that just like completely surprised me. Uh, the notable exception might be the one year that they put a question about uh, the squeeze theorem on, which I think was 2019. That was a weird problem. Um, but otherwise, it's like same thing every year and they put it on one year, so it'll probably be on another year. Doing these questions is the way to go. I like to do every question from 2006 on if I can find the time. It's a ton of questions. If you start there and you get all the way to the present, you're probably gonna be so ready for the exam that the exam itself is a little bit boring, which is a great goal to have. Um, all right, I do think though, if time is any kind of issue for you, uh, you're best off looking at maybe 2016 onward uh, so that would be my advice. If time is short, start at 2016, work your way forward. You'll, you'll be comfortable with the exam, uh, but honestly, more is better. So I linked to the College Board's archive of the problems, but they move that around from time to time. It's kind of hard to find. 
Uh, so here we go. These are the past ones. You can see this goes all the way back, I think, to 1998. Uh, so that's a lot of problems. Uh, you would probably never have enough time to do all of those, which is totally fine because you're just studying for this thing. Um, so if that link doesn't work, let me know. I'll try to update it. Uh, I've also done video solutions for like a ton of these problems. So you can find those in uh, this spreadsheet. Uh, nope, that's a playlist uh, or this spreadsheet, which I try to keep updated. So this is the playlist. It has 174 videos in it. Uh, you know, start, start watching them. Uh, you can do the problems with me. You can see my solutions. Uh, I would say my solutions pretty much will always get nine out of nine points uh, or certainly like I do them on the fly right after the exam. So they're, they're genuine, they have the correct write-ups. Uh, they're, they're, I think, very useful. I also have them organized here where you can just click on a specific year, but I think it's more, you know, uh, I think it's more useful to just go through this, the uh, playlist. I also have playlists on my channel where I've sorted them out by type, which maybe I'll add to this uh, page at some point, depending on the response that this gets. Um, where it's like, you know, you're looking always at like using the first derivative versus volume problems. Uh, it's, it's pretty helpful, but you can search my YouTube channel for that or maybe I will have added it in at some point. So that's really the overall plan. Uh, you wanna do all this, uh, you will be prepared. I've also added some other resources to this page that I've just kind of like made over the years. So one of them uh, that I would definitely like to highlight is the big review video document. So I'm gonna open that. Uh, and what this is, let me hide this, is um, it's a list of like a topic and then my video that is targeted to you reviewing that topic. Uh, it's a Google document. I might turn it into a web page. Frankly, I don't really know what I'm doing with making web pages, so that's a future project. Uh, there's a quick description. Uh, then there's a link to a video that I made about it. People seem to really like it. I think it's very useful. Uh, if you're not sure about some particular topic, you should find it in here, click it, watch the video. You will be better off for having done that. Um, at the bottom of this one is a link to uh, the BC videos. Also, there's uh, the FRQ videos in here. And I think there's also, uh, yeah, at the top of this, there's just a playlist of all of those videos. That might be on the web page too. Uh, but you can watch a playlist of all of these and just, you know, cover everything. Uh, I think the rest of it is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, there's the problem sets that I've made, uh, a review of limits, uh, Riemann sums to definite integrals. So these are things that uh, I know people uh, 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 yeah. So these are things that I know that people struggle with a little bit. Uh, so I made individual things specifically about them. Uh, notably, I think is the one about series multiple choice questions. I have a list in there of the types of things they ask on multiple choice questions. I think that's really useful if you're taking the BC exam. Um, some of these have video solutions. Some of them are just waiting me, for me to make video solutions. So I don't know, as of now, they don't all exist. Eventually they will all exist. Uh, and that's it. So it's a very aggressive plan. It is a lot of work, but getting a five on the AP exam, I think is worth it. You get the credits, you can skip ahead a bit, uh, you might be done taking math forever, depending on your goals in life. There are just tons of options. So I hope you find this helpful and good luck.